My kitchen roll doesn't have a home yet. We could buy one of these things, like the household paper holders, but honestly, what's, what's the point of this? I mean, okay, I guess that works, but you know, still like two hands to the pieces or whatnot. We'll just do that, right? So, we're gonna do something better than that. In particular, the idea is to use only one hand to, you know, get the uh, paper towels. And so, the way to do this is very similar to what you have in the bathroom, um, which is to put this on such a wooden cylinder, and then install this up here, and then, ideally, you can just remove it like that, right? So that's very handy. Uh, you know, you can have like, one hand like dirty or whatever, and you're not gonna massify, <laughs> you're not gonna make the uh, kitchen roll nasty um, with your dirty hand. Uh, well, first of all, remember the rule. The rule is not to make any additional holes, but we have um, very nice geometry here, which we can exploit. We have this uh, thing here, which is kind of like, which, which sticks out, right? This uh, wooden bar. And the idea is to build our kitchen roll holder up here, kind of like on this flat surface that's down here, and then use um, use something to press up against it. And we're gonna just put two legs back here uh, that are going to press up and to actually do this in a way where we don't have to design very precisely the dimensions of the thing, uh, even just to make it actually feasible. Um, if you think about it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like do something that we can first insert here, and then we can, you know, there's this simple bolt, which we can like just twist in order to squeeze this part to the top. And uh, that should hopefully give us a very firm hold now this project I'm gonna cut again because it's actually quite complicated and there are some things up here which we need to take care of. So let's start by modeling um, the environments that we have. Okay, so this is what we're working with. Um, we have the back of the wall in the back, and uh, we have these wooden boards which are sticking out from the shelves or um, the cupboards that are up top. And then this thing here is a lamp that is there and that we have to work around. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to insert the kitchen roll and then we're gonna design the part around that. Okay, so that will be the piece that will be holding the kitchen roll, as could be seen from the sketch, I guess. Let me show the sketch again. Um, so now, I guess, comes a bit of a fun part, because what I want to do is, um, well, let me finish designing this, and then I'm going to show you how I intend to attach the um, kitchen roll to this thing.
<laughs> That's a fun amount of uh, constraint magic, but basically, so the idea is that the um, cylinder on which the roll will be hanging can slide out. Actually, I just realized I made a small mistake in design, which I'll have to undo. Uh, because basically that's the inner diameter of the kitchen roll, but actually the cylinder is a bit smaller, so I have to fix that. But yeah, the idea is that basically we can slide this in from the back. <clears throat> uh, should be clear very soon from an expert. So yeah, let me just fix all of these things um, that I need to fix. Maybe I have to redo things, but yeah, basically that's the idea. So we'll see in a bit. Cool, so that's the setup. Um, that's the holder that we're going to have, and uh, there is this mechanism to slide this in. Let me just hide the roll for a second. So, the cylinder we can take it and basically slide it in from the back to replace the kitchen roll. It's going to be fun to manufacture. Um, now, of course, the brackets. So, this will be attached to a top plate which I'll try to fit as snugly as possible to the cupboard. Um, and this will be attached to these guys with L brackets. And actually to do that, I'm gonna remove part of this part so we can uh, fit in the L bracket. So let's do that. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna modify this sketch um, so that basically the top here will be replaced by the L bracket. Uh, let's do that. I guess that'll actually be part of the mirroring. So let me push that back to before the mirroring. Oh, and this will actually be lower because we're going to have the top plate that I forgot. Oh, well, that's a problem. Um, hmm. That's fixable. Let's just make the slider lower. Okay, so there's space. Nice, so that's at the top plate. Oh, 
Cool, now comes the fun part, which will be the legs. Um, so basically, this thing here, we want to be pushed hard to the top. And in particular, we're going to try to push it towards this top left corner here. So to do that, instead of doing a straight lag, I'm going to make a slightly angled lag. That then, with the screw that I showed before, I'll basically be able to press up there. So let's design that. All right, let's insert the bolt on the foot, I guess. Yeah, I just wanted to see how much screw there is in there. But uh, yeah, it looks like we can actually make it much higher without loss losing some stability. Okay, so let's mirror this and um, it will actually be done. Okay, cool. So um, that's it. So we're gonna have like the most important thing, I guess, or the thing that maybe I'll start with is this bottom plate, um, which we can just then install with these two legs. It'll be fun to drill the holes here at the bottom for this. Um, yeah, <clears throat> and then the rest should be more feasible. So we have these sidewalls here, which uh, also have this profile that allows the insertion of the kitchen roll. And we also have these L brackets here, which attach the top plate to the side plates. So let's get cracking. Actually, come to think of it, I uh, looked at this thing a little bit and I'm a bit worried that with this setup, it'll be hard to remove the kitchen paper roll without hitting the back without hitting these legs so i will have to reduce the angle there uh let's just resolve that issue with a sketch Okay, this is awesome. So it can actually make it barely, which is cool. Uh, we can pretend like this was the intention from the beginning. Yay! So as a 
Let's see, I'm uh, doing these together. Lessons learned from the previous videos. It doesn't really matter. All right. So these pieces here are gonna go like this. So according to the plan and to make things easier, I'm gonna make a cutout on both sides. But I'm actually only gonna do it first on one side, and then we're gonna use the actual parts to measure the cutout on the other side. So let me draft that. Yeah, guides are not that bad of an idea. I'm getting sloppy. But uh, you know, it's the process of finding out which effort is really worth it. So now, hopefully, I did this right. Very nice. This fits here and it's well not perfectly flush, but flush enough. Um, so yeah, and then this angle here, it's gonna be a new thing for this channel. For this little video series, I'm gonna be working with metal. So it's gonna be exciting. I think that'll be tomorrow though. Whoop, just realized that I forgot a cut. Uh, actually, this has to be also cut to this length. Just realized that I'm not trying to fit the part into the kitchen. So this is a bit of a long cut. And apparently I'm not very good at keeping the line straight, so I attach the guide again. So let's do that. So yeah, this is where the almost perfect comes in. Not exactly straight here. Uh, let me try a new tool. Nice, very cool. Whoever came up with the tool, brilliant. Just fit it into the kitchen, filed it out a bit, and look at that. Plop! It fits perfectly and it just holds. Awesome. Now, I'll let you in on a fun little design decision that I took. If we take these so we have these things, right, which will be sitting here and the other one on the other side, as well as soon as we have the cutout. And these have to be at the right angle, right? So what we could do is we could like place a piece of wood here and, you know, like just screw from, from both sides and, you know, that, that'd be very nice. However, for compactness reasons, there isn't actually really space left for something like that, right? And so what I came up with instead is to use an L profile out of metal. And so this will be something new for this channel. Working with metal, finally. Um, now, you know, I could have bought maybe existing profiles. I mean, you can buy kind of like these pieces which have already holes in them, but if we think that through, actually, that wouldn't be such a good idea because, you know, they come with holes, they're, they're pretty hard, and then you attach them like that, and then where do you put the screws, right? Because, like, there's there are no wood screws which are as short as this. So, even more fun, and actually I already went ahead and prototyped a little. We're gonna make such brackets a little bit prettier than this one, but, well, maybe not much prettier. <laughs> um, and put them in here and instead of putting a wood screw in here and punch through that we're gonna be even more compact we're gonna make a hole here and then if you look precisely you can actually see there's a threading in here and we're gonna 
make a threading ourselves and then we can use a very small screw and come in from the other side from the wood and you know screw into this piece of metal so uh, yeah that's what we're gonna do so what's the most convenient way to cut metal I went to the hardware store and I asked them what they recommended and they recommended me one of these things it's a pretty nice idea the idea is that you put in your metal piece here and then you have these guides which are straight and you can just come down and cut like that right simple enough well my problem is is that the saw that I have here the saw blade is a little bit too thin for this thing and if you look at the width of the guide and the saw blade what you can see is that it can actually wiggle around in there and so when what happened when I made this first experimental cut is I you know put the metal in started cutting and then all of a sudden it was harder to cut <laughs> whoops yeah that's yeah that didn't really work out so instead of doing manual labor let's have some fun <laughs> <laughs> well, that chewed it up. All right. I mean, look at that. Beautiful. Hell yeah. All right. And now to the fun part. Awesome. Well, let's do that three more times. Actually, let's see how good my eye is in this instance. Mm, yeah, not so good. Let's actually use the ruler next time. Let's see what happens when I drill directly with the big bit. I guess it'll be a bit harder. No pun intended. All right. That works quite well. Chips flying everywhere. Metal chips. Metal chips. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I could use uh, something underneath it. Actually, <clears throat> I could use 
this thing here, but I guess I'm gonna introduce that a bit later. It's a bit more annoying to use anyways, but uh, yeah, for holes that have to be straight, it's certainly very good. Neat, very neat, apart from the bad distance. Let's do the second hole. <laughs> Who cares? This might be important for the other side then. If you want. Very nice, if I may say so myself. Now, that fits the thingy that will be holding the paper. And then we can fix the same thing on the other side. And then we're gonna do the guide. Then we're gonna put it into the kitchen to fit it on. And then we're gonna make the legs. Actually, I'm gonna use the same tool, the micro saw, I think, to cut this and the legs. So, yeah, let's just make a series out of that. And now, something fun. Equally long, don't tell anybody. All right, <clears throat> so back to the scroll saw, and I'm gonna use the scroll saw session to also cut out the guide where we insert the kitchen roll, and I will do this with good old wood from Project One. Now this is a very cool part. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the hard thing, which is this circle here. Uh, and I haven't thought it through yet, actually. But I know I'm gonna be using this tool for that. So that's also something new. And... Yeah. How to attach it? Let me think about it. Okay, that was a quick thing. So I'm just gonna be using this sacrificial piece of wood. And yeah, this is attached to the table. Here goes nothing. Okay, it's moving around, which I don't like. And I'm wondering whether I should pre-drill this hole. I think I'm gonna do that. Because if the hole is pre-drilled, then the guidance is in and stuff is gonna move around less. And that's not drilled too deep. I think this is through. Yeah, let me do the two ones separately at this point. Just in case I new to this tool, so better be safe, I'm sorry. Here goes nothing again. Why is it offset? It's a bit offset. Should be fine. Oh wow, this is just wobbling around, what the hell? 
I'm just gonna go ahead and hope that once um, there is more hole that will be better guided. Not quite sure how much I like this thing yet. That looks interesting. Yeah, now the hole is definitely too small. Maybe I can file it up. Let's just see what happens. Bah, too small. I don't like it. Oh. Let me think. Okay, so I decided that I'm gonna be using the bigger one. And I'll just put one piece on top of the other and hopefully be able to press everything through. Look, by the way, how nice it looks. Maybe I can even get double clamping action going. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna do that. One and it's warm. <laughs> oh no, it's two. Oh yeah, nice. I think it's two. Maybe not two. Not enough two yet. Yeah, now it's two. Awesome. Let's just see how much bigger it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, next time I'm gonna have to do something else, I guess. Yeah, it's wobbling around a bit. I don't like it that much. It would have been really nice if it would be tight. But uh, I guess worst case, I can redo these parts at some point. Although I'm actually planning to glue them. So that's not so cool. So yeah, it sits in here. Uh, let's see how that goes. Let me file it down a bit. Oh shit. <laughs> Oops. Good. I think uh, it's pretty nice though. Perfect. Okay, so the screwing operation is easy. Um, I'm just gonna glue it with it being attached to everything and the nice thing about that is that it'll be very flush and I won't glue the other side yet, I'll actually do the same thing on the other side once the other side is ready. So, let's just glue this. This time I'll put a sacrificial wood underneath and uh, hopefully there will be no split in an exit. Let's see? Yeah, looks good. Uh, this will have a counter sink anyways. Let's do that. Nice, this is much better. <sighs> fit it in or maybe we'll have to do something different. I guess the nice thing is because these two things are the same and these two things are the same uh, even if there is a slight difference in the alignment of those like this one <laughs> sticks out a bit I'll have to file that down maybe and this one doesn't doesn't really matter because you know like the distance from this to the roll will be anyways this plus this so that's very nice and hopefully if it's centered enough it 
Okay, it's actually not great. Might, I might, I'm very tempted, I'm gonna, yeah. Okay, right. <coughs> I'm gonna cut a longer piece. Yeah. A little fail. That's okay. In the meantime, I'm gonna glue this. <laughs> I guess what I could have done is to cut this thing uh, to just make the inset a bit narrower. But I think now it's too late because now I did the screw holes already. So I think it's gonna be fine to just cut a longer piece of this. This actually fits perfectly and I'm gonna keep it like this. So while this is drying, let's do I think one of the more interesting things uh, in this project, which is to make the holes in these guys for the screws at the bottom to come out and the challenge here is that yeah like I want to like make these rather long potentially but they also have to be super straight for that I will be using this for the first time and I'll have to get a little bit creative uh, for being able to you know drill holes straight into this so I think I'll do something with attachments here to the side Give me a second. Ah, that's eyeball it. Doesn't really matter that much as long as it's straight down. Good enough. <clears throat> okay, very nice. Um, and what I'm gonna do is now make the proper sized hole, which I remember correctly is one centimeter. Interestingly, I'm not sure that this is straight anymore. Wait a second. Hmm. Sure doesn't look it, and yeah, this was a bit wobbly. Let me touch that better. Check the straightness. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, so this is gonna go in here, and let's hope that uh, the wood won't split because of the teeth that go in. So I'm gonna push it in a little bit, and the rest will be done by hammer. And the very last bit will be done by uh, screwing, of course. Uh, not perfect, not perfect in the middle, but good enough. And uh, maybe for the other one, we can see. If we can somehow make it better. But now we have the legs. Uh, I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, very cool. All right, let's do the other one. I might have an idea of how to put this in, in a nice way. It'll involve some 
<clears throat> using of stuff. <laughs> nice. Second leg. So, almost done. Time to put in the legs. And the way we're gonna do this is, yeah, relatively straightforward. I'm gonna come in here and here. I hope the angle calculation is correct. I guess it has some tolerance, uh, but yeah, basically these tops should be hitting the end of the kitchen uh, as this is squeezed in. So let's see if this is true. <laughs> Otherwise we'll have to move things around a bit. So I'm going to screw these in with like simple short screws. Uh, yeah, I mean the only force is going to be a bit sideways shear force, so we didn't, don't need long screws. It's going to be much easier to do all together and I'm gonna so the legs will be angled back so I'm gonna put the holes not in the middle but a bit more towards the back right, just like this and this so let's drill those real quick and let's do by one by one so that we don't switch the legs by accident All right, let's try things on. Moment of truth. All right, wish me luck. All right, first problem is interesting. How to get it in. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Thankfully, I thought about this a little bit, at least with the screws. Yeah, interesting problem here. Screw comes loose. Let's just remove the white ones for some extra clearing. Squeezing it gets in. Nice. Alright. Okay, cool. Well, this looks already great. Now let's just pop the, pop the legs out. Fun. I didn't think that the legs would want to go sideways. Now what we're also doing is we're pressing in the um, the things that attach at the bottom, the threads that have like these four nails that press into the wood. So I guess that gets squeezed in a little bit too. It looks slightly not straight. That's fine. Alright, and that's it. So, let's see if it works. Definitely presses together. There's definitely a tight grip on top. No. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay, it has a bit too much play, but yeah, if we don't press sideways, it should be fine. Ugh. Well, interesting, interesting. But I think it works. So let's just see whether we get the wanted effect. So, yeah, I guess some tearing has to be done. Like, I guess if you're very slow, it won't work. But you know, like a quick access. Oh boy. <laughs> Quick 
quick access wise. In the worst case, we'll use two hands if it's like a little bit loose, but in general it seems to work. It's actually fun, it, <laughs> it automatically extends itself. So, okay, so it's not perfect. Right, because we have like this thing coming up. And I guess if you tear it straight up, yeah, if you tear it straight up, it's very fine. Awesome! I would say, in general, this is a success. So, I hope you got something out of this video, and see you next time.